What is happening, my beautiful people? Welcome back to another video on the channel. My name is Richard, and on this channel, we provide you with tips, tricks, strategies to enhance your international student experience. I also sometimes share my experiences living in the United States, and recently, I have also started a series on professional development on the channel. So if this is content that you like, consider hitting the subscribe button and turning on notifications so that anytime a new video drops, you will be notified. Also follow us on Twitter at Glow underscore engaged to stay up to date with previews and sneak peeks of our upcoming videos. In my previous video, I spoke about what informational interviews are, why they are important, and how you can get into the habit of conducting informational interviews. Until we speak with somebody who has real life insider experience. And this is where informational interviews come in. In today's video, I'm bringing you the second part to that video. And I'm going to talk about some questions you can ask during informational interviews. So if you're ready, Let's get right into the video. If you have not watched that video yet, click on this card to watch the first part of this video, or I'm also going to leave a link in the video description below. So before we jump into the main subject of today's video, I just wanted to give a brief overview of how to conduct an informational interview. You should always regard an informational interview as a business appointment, and as such, you need to conduct yourself in that manner. The reason is, you are trying to interview a professional to find out insider information that you can use to get yourself through the door into that same occupational space. What better way to make a first good impression than to actually be professional once you meet with the person and you are interacting with them? If you have made it clear in advance the explicit purpose of your interview, you will in all probability find your contact an interesting and helpful person. If you already know what kind of questions you are going to ask or what job areas you are looking at, you should be able to identify one or two people in your contact list or in your networks who can provide you with the optimum information that you are looking for. So before you even conduct an informational interview, proper planning is key. Also when you schedule an appointment with the professional for an interview, remember to keep the appointment time and appear promptly for your interview. Don't be too casually dressed or too overly dressed. A business casual or dressing in between casual and business could be the sweet spot. Also, don't walk into this interview blind. At least research the person that you are going to be interviewing. Their name, what they prefer to be called, what pronouns they ascribe to, even their title or position that they hold in the organization that they work. Now, this is important because it tells them that you've also taken time to learn about them, and to get to know them from your own perspective. Imagine how embarrassing it will look or feel when you get the person's name wrong for the first time. I don't think that makes a good first impression, right? So please take some time to research the person's background to have at least some basic knowledge about who they are so that that can also foster a good conversation. So another thing that you want to keep in mind is that Again, don't walk into the interview without knowing what you are going to ask. At least come with questions and be prepared to steer the conversation. Unlike a job interview, you are in the driver's seat and you want the information that you need in order to make any decisions later. So make sure that you are directing or steering the conversation in a way that allows you to get as much information as you want. Also be considerate about the person's time. Aim to keep the conversation as brief between 15 to 30 minutes because they may also have other engagements. And of course, in a professional setting, other people's time is important. After all, time is money, they say. So be respectful of the person's time. Unless you agree, however, 
if you both have agreed to a different time frame or how long you want the interview to go then fine that works but one thing to also remember is that your contact might ask you some questions as well so make sure you have your elevator pitch ready if you do not know what an elevator pitch is share with us in the comment section below and we'll drop you a full video about what elevator pitches are but at least be prepared to talk briefly about why you want to work in that career space what skills you have and things like that this will also give the person you are interviewing some information about who you are and if possible direct you to some people that may be in their networks who may be hiring someone who has your skill set so in the next section i'm going to break the kind of questions that you can ask into two sections obviously there are so many questions that you can ask and so i'm not going to go in full detail of the range of questions sometimes your previous question and the answer you receive can prompt five other questions but ideally these are some general rule of thumb or these are some general questions that you can start your interview with so like i said i'm going to break the questions into two categories the first category which will be occupational questions will be questions that surrounds the job itself and how to get into the job and then the second set of questions will be the functional questions the questions that pertains to what you actually do on the job so if you're ready let's talk about some occupational questions that you may ask so one of the questions you can ask during an informational interview is what is the title of the person you are interviewing remember knowing the title of the person you are interviewing could be key because it helps you to look at what the organization structure looks or feels like so you can ask the person um, what is your title the second question or another question you can ask is what are other commonly used titles for this position obviously some positions can have multiple titles so knowing again the keywords or the buzzwords as far as titles are concerned in relation to the position your interviewee holds is also important this could also affect in the long term your application if you are still interested in getting into those spaces so you can also ask them what are the duties they perform during a typical day week or month are their duties structured or unstructured are their duties the same every day or there's a certain level of variety now the reason this question is important is that it gives you a sense of how a typical day in that position looks like maybe you are a very structured person and a typical day in that position is not too structured so having an idea of what a day today in this position looks like could also help you decide whether this is actually something you want to do another question you can ask is what educational program is recommended as preparation inquire about the distinction between the courses which are desirable and those which are indispensable now this is very important because especially if you are just graduating from college knowing which relevant courses or even if you are in college knowing which relevant courses will lead you to a specific job is always important this helps you to again if you are in college helps you to pick those classes or include those classes in your plan and you know build towards that program now if you are already done with school knowing some of these classes could be beneficial because maybe you may not directly have taken those classes but you've taken similar classes that yielded the same outcomes as these classes that the person might talk about or you could also do additional online learning on yourself with these classes to you know get the knowledge and ideas that you need in order to perform well in this job so yes knowing the classes or courses or even the educational background that one needs to venture into such positions or job categories is very very important you could also ask what degree or certificate do employers look for this is also important because of course you cannot use certain certificates to work in certain fields right you cannot use a humanity certificate to try to get into a stem field so knowing what certificate employers look for could also be crucial in determining 
how you navigate some of these complex job search strategies. Another question you could ask is, what kind of work or internship experience would employers look for in a job applicant? And how does one gain some of these experiences? Now, these experiences could be different, right? But knowing what work experience and internship experiences employers need could also influence, you know, your choice of internships and your choice of work experiences that you are going to list on your resume or on your cover letter when you are building your application packet. So like I said, these are some of the few questions that you can ask. I'm going to leave a full list of some questions that I found that you can ask in the video description below so that you can check it out at your own time. But for now, these are some of the few questions you can ask as far as your occupational questions are related. So one of the questions you can ask as far as the functional questions are concerned is, what are some of the satisfying aspects of your work? This basically gives the interviewee an opportunity to share with you some of their high points and some of the things that brings them joy. Some of the things that makes them wake up every day and want to go to work. Let me know in the comment section below what are some of the most satisfying aspects of your job. But yes, asking this question is very, very important. It also gives you an idea of some of the positives of the job. And then on the flip side, you could also ask what are some of the negatives or some of the challenges that comes with the job. Obviously, no job is perfect. And this is where they also get to share their personal struggles with you. And anything that they've experienced that they deem is, a, is an obstacle or a challenge. But yes, knowing the good and the bad will also help you decide if this is something you want to do or something you are willing to wake up every day to go and do. Another question you could ask is, what are the greatest pressures or anxieties that come with this job? Believe me, you ask anybody who even makes six figures, there's always a certain level of pressure and anxiety that comes with the job. We all have those days, we all have those moments. This is an opportunity to at least hear from their perspective what some of their anxieties are and even get an idea of what they've done to get through those pressures. Because hey, maybe their solution could work for you, maybe it wouldn't, but having an idea of the possible anxieties or the possible triggers could make you adequately prepared before you actually get into the job. Another question you can ask is, what are the major responsibilities of the job? So yes, you may have asked what a day-to-day -day looks like, but this is where you actually see the major responsibilities from morning to evening or on a day-to-day -day or weekly or monthly basis. So this also gives you an insight of, you know, a thorough breakdown of the responsibilities expected of you in that position. And that also helps you to decide if you have the bandwidth to actually carry this through. Another question you can ask is, what are the toughest problems or decisions you've had to make in this position? Now, this is where you get to see the leadership skills that you need or problem solving or conflict resolution skills that you need. So some of these questions, will, so some of these questions are basically meant to open up a certain level of information to you to give you an idea of, you know, the internal mechanics of the job in question or the industry in general. And that is why it is also important to find other people who work in the same industry to conduct informational interviews with. Because one person's experience may not necessarily paint the full picture. And we all have different character traits and experiences that we bring. And we are definitely going to attach different perspectives and opinions to the jobs that we do. So getting more people to interview and getting more information will actually paint like a really good picture for you and give you a wealth of information that you can sort of sift through to pick what you need in order to make a decision. So again, I'm going to leave a list of some functional questions that I found online in the video description below so that you can check it out yourself. But these are some of the questions that you can ask as far as informational interviews are concerned. Now, what do you do once your informational interview is over? 
yes you are going to say thank you to them in the moment and leave but i always advise that whether it's a job interview or an informational interview so what i'm going to suggest is that you write a thank you note to the people you have interviewed report back to them with any feedback you may have followed as far as any suggestions they gave you is concerned if they gave you any suggestions or if they pointed you in the direction of other resource people that you interviewed report back to them let them know how that went you know keep them in the know you can also connect with them on linkedin if you have not already so remember what i said in my previous linkedin video grow your network and so anybody you meet on your way whilst conducting informational interviews is a potential network look them up on linkedin connect with them ask for recommendations if you can but stay in touch and keep them up to date remember by building a strong network with career contracts you enhance your chances and the likelihood that they will offer assistance with your job search when you are ready for the next step in your job search process it's very very crucial job search is 50% your skills or 60% your skills and experiences that you bring to the table and probably 40% the networks that you have so use these tips that i've shared with you to continue to enhance your professional development use these skills to continue to build your networks use these skills to continue to practice or get into the habit of starting informational interviews and share with me in the comment section below what your experience with informational interviews has been thank you so much for watching this video if you are not already subscribed to the channel it will do me a lot of good if you click on the subscribe button and turn it on the notification bell if you have any topic or subject area that you would want me to cover leave that in the comment section below and i'll do my best to drop that content for you keep cleaning up your linkedin keep building your resumes and stuff stay safe out there stay beautiful i'll see you on the next video peace